status on chord one. Um, orchard one, orchard one, not that much, which is weird because we made some pull request on Thursday. Uh, oh, the yeah, the laser guys were vacation, but we matched their things. Um, admin menu fix for content item visibility. We talked about it already. Um, and the cloud variable link dot edit. Yes, it was a merge uh, issue match conflict which was cor incorrectly fixed and uh, Jean-Thierry fixed it, we talked about it. Widget command service um, to take into account one of the parameters which was about the title and now it's not forcing to render the title, it's taking the one from the command. So the bug PR fixed. Want to next add a canvas in page command? Yes, it's just a default layout now adds a canvas by default when you use the command from the page to match what the migration does or the recipe does. Uh, this one on the dev branch is to um, update the version of a container. Um, or at least when you create it, I can't remember. Not this one, this one. Where is it? Enter visualize. So even when it's an existing one, so it's updating the container uh, properties to match a new API version so that the files that will be served from the Azure Blob Storage will have the latest features like streaming MP4 files, which is not done by default with the version we were using before. Or not setting a version, you have to specifically set a version to get the, the features enabled. If you have created the account before this date. What does it mean to be streaming and before? It's about not having to download the full file before being able to play it. Because but there is a... If, isn't that more up to the client? Uh, the client and the server have to provide the features. The client needs to handle that and the server has a specific protocol to do that. And the, the protocol is not enabled on the blobs if you don't set the... And it, it provides a link in the issue. Let me show you. From the, the, from the Azure storage uh, team, which explains that and why you need this thing. Otherwise, you don't have the feature. Um, what is the issue? Okay, but it's it's normal HTTP download, yes. not not some kind of streaming protocol. Or, um, I mean, I'm not, not like a sure. media streaming protocol. Like I'm a, I'm not sure. It's on HTTP, but it's a custom communication maybe with HTTP because mm -hmm. it it sends a header saying I can handle that, and when you, your client sends a request, it says Can you handle that? And it answers the correct. Uh, so. 74, 72, let me show you. I read the blog post, but I don't remember the details. 74, 72. For the link, not this one. On the PR, maybe? Yes. This one. String MP4 in Azure Storage Containers. So I don't know how it works, but you need that. Let me see. Okay. Well, I can. Read up on it if I'm curious. Okay. But yeah, it looks like it's uh, some kind of extension to HTTP anyway. Um, as I, and we merged the branch from Chris about adding iDecoration, uh, the iDecorator pattern on Autofac. So you can wrap an existing service and decorate it with uh, custom features necessary for uh, the um, Glimpse PR. And Chris said that he was uh, 
cleaning up the, the glim spear. So that's the state of the spear. Uh, so that's it. Questions? Who's there now? Eight. Six. Okay, good. Um, watch on once. Uh, watch on two. I'm up to date because I just no, I'm not up to date. Fetch all because I fit some bugs this morning. Much more commits. Oh, like crazy! So there is a big now. This what is this branch? Oh, this is no branch. Can I just look at master? This will help. Okay, master. And I will mention the other branches after. Um, a whole step, a whole step to be able to create holes during the recipes. Um, we don't care. We're being obsolete process. Shape cache documentation. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was after the meeting because during the meeting, I think Daniel asked me a question. Or was it? I can't remember. Well, Daniel asked me a question. I couldn't answer. So I wrote some documentation for the cache and how it works and how to use it. Um, this method now is async. This is for the shape. The goal of this method on the shape is when it's actually executed like not cached, um, you can do something. And now it's async. Uh, fixing menu URL generation. Yes, the URL can contain a tilde slash, so you need to call url.content. Uh, using actual site name in views. So now instead of showing orchard, we show the actual site name from the settings in the, in the layout. Uh, container token block helper. This one, I think I mentioned, is for blogs. It's a container block helper in um, in the tokens. It looks like this. So a block helper is a token that starts with a hash, and um, it it just executes the inner thing uh, with some more context, some different context. So in this case, this block container will redefine the current context to be the container of the current content. So when we call slug, it will be the slug of the container of the current content. So here we say slug of the container slash my slug. So this is used, for instance, in a blog, which is a list, so a container. If you apply it on a blog post, it will use the slug of the blog slash your slug. Okay, blog slash blog post. Uh, this is a container block helper. Um, created the theme, the blog theme. Um, I will show you this new theme. Using base uh, path base. This one is very important change because this is something that ASP.NET Core provides and ASP.NET didn't provide and that we are not using uh, up to this change. The idea of uh, path base is like the virtual path on the on the previous ASP.NET uh, versions. This is a prefix on your uh, request that will be transparent for the current running app. So if you do tilde slash, it will be relative to this path base. And this is very important for us with tenant prefixes. So before this change, whenever we were generating routes, we were using the prefix of the current tenant everywhere, shell setting prefix, you will see. You see, not, not this one. But here we were getting the route prefix by getting the request route prefix and then changing all the routes with this. So all the link generation and all the tilde slash references, all the routes had to be prefixed with a tenant um, value. So with, by using this feature, we don't have anything to do. We just need during the request to assign this value, the path base, to the one from the current tenant prefix, remove it from the current path, okay? And that's it. Now, every, everything in MVC views, in MVC controllers, in redirection, just have to deal with tilde slash, and they will be relative to the current tenant prefix. So that's very uh, useful. And it simplifies the code too. So this change is important. So we don't, you see, we don't, so, and now 
uh, on, on your side is that everything that is not tenant specific like static assets should not use tilde slash but use slash instead okay uh, and that will be much easier to handle uh, uh, relative urls even with tenants um, content preview support on fields, so I just updated the fields to trigger the content preview event to re refresh it. Um, some features for theming. Um, theming. Sebastian, Sebastian yes. a question on the path base. Um, yes. You, you, at the end, you said anything that's not tenant specific should use just a slash. Yes. But what if your um, what if your whole Orchard site is hosted on a sub uh, path? How? Um, well, like um, you host it in IIS, and you just create it in a folder, or you have it in a vroot. Um, I think it will work. I think it's the slash will mean the the root of your IIS folder. It should work. Well, will, uh, hmm, will it? Simple okay. as that, okay. right? No. Uh, otherwise, I, how do you? Otherwise, how would you have done that before? Well, any any time that you have a URL that starts with a slash, it'll go to the root of the of the host. And the only way that you could make it not do that before is to use an app relative URL, which is the one that starts with a tilde. But if you don't use that, I yeah, think I it'll see. always be relative to the root. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I see. But now I, but even without it, IS and, and MVC are different process. So there is, even if you use tilde, you could not, it will not work with the IS virtual path because they're different. Mm -hmm. Unless, unless what is possible is that the IS2 cluster uh, binding will change the request here to contain or not to not contain that. Can it change some headers to say this is the base pass also? Maybe. Um, maybe. I don't know maybe. about headers, but it can. Okay. But can you set a meta tag, maybe. But it would be. I don't know. Maybe it's error, and we have to check that. Maybe there is already a base a path base actually. Mm. It is possible that is, there is already a path base, and in this case, we will have to concatenate and not define it. Yeah, because it's it's empty for my test. Maybe it's not empty when you come from IS with a virtual path, and mm. then in this case, we will need to append you, it. You need to append to it, yeah. Okay. Please try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. Like I don't know if this is something that comes out. In, uh, in rendered markup or not? Um, then I, I yeah, I'm, I'm not sure then. Mm. Why does that? Because no, the markup will render whatever we render. Mm. And and if it's the case, then what's the solution? Even without Ultron. Well, you always have to use app relative URLs. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, maybe it's uh, between path and base path though. Yeah, but tilde slash is relative to path base. Always. Yeah, well, I don't know about ASP.NET Core. I don't know enough about it. But in, in classic ASP.NET, then tilde slash is always relative to where ASP.NET thinks the root of the application is. And that might be several folders down from the host name. OK, so maybe I w instead of doing slash we should do tilde slash dot dot slash well only if we have a okay which will file an issue we have to track it and test it on is with eventual path yeah um adding content preview support and field we said that some features for theming some feature for theming because when you are trying to make a theme then you see the limitations on the theme uh, extensibility and alternates that you're missing like 
list summary per content type or list per list shape per content type too. Um, what else here? This is just a sync. List parts HTML, don't care. Content shapes, what's in here? Uh, again, more alternates. Yeah, I was missing the content dash content type dot the display type. Uh, razor page, what is this? Some helpers in Razor page, let me remove that. Uh, or default. Um, I, we had something like this with has text in Ultra 1. Or default is that render that, and if it's null, render that. I will show, uh, do I use it there? Right, it's not showing here. Uh, this one, remember last week we had um, to find a shape by its type in a list. Now you can also just remove a shape by its type from a list. Uh, and shape result is displaying a shape result, so a new helper on shape results so that from your driver you can uh, plug a displaying event to the shape. You don't have to create a shape table provider to register a displaying event on the shape you are building here. Um, so this is the processing when it's not cached and this is a displaying. Um, that's some options. Move body part up because it was too low. Theme block, content preview, don't care. Uh, fixing jQuery URL. Uh, fixing navigation ordering, which was uh, unordered. Uh, path base, so more changes on path base that I missed. So you see, for instance, before in the setup controller, we had to get the request URL prefix and to return to the correct element. When you pass the setup, now we just say, we are in the current element, so just return to the home page of the current element. Um, verifying existing tenant prefixes, just to validate that there is no tenant with the same prefix and domain. Uh, site name on the layout screen, localizing login screen, don't care, content definition step, content definition step, yes. So this one is a new recipe step. It's to be able to define some content types from the recipe, okay? And how do you define a content type from the recipe? You just write the full content definition of the type that you can get from the database, for instance, because this is how it's stored, uh, all the settings and everything inside a JSON document, uh, parts and fields, it's very easy to understand um, and to change from the existing values in database and later from the exports. Um, so that's it, a new step, making menus listable so that we can see the menu that we create in the list of content items. Um, adding a blog and a blog post in a recipe, I will show you the recipe in the end. Uh, this is new types and you see pattern for the blog post using the container slug. Um, body aspect shape. So in yeah, body aspect shape is just a shape that will populate the body aspect aspect and render it wherever the body is coming from. Uh, script modules and support in recipe. So this is a big uh, commit. It has uh, scripting modules, scripting abstractions, uh, and um, core to provide the default scripting manager that will let you uh, manage all the scripted engines, and one scripting engine, which is a JavaScript scripting engine. And I will show you how, it's, how it works. Um, and it's extensible, so we can add a C-sharp uh, scripting engine or any other one that we want, even simple ones. I will show you how to um, choose which one to execute. Uh, body aspect generation, we talked about it. Uh, hiding field in summary views. Uh, list pagination. So I created a new kind of pager. Uh, so today we have the pager shape and I created, a, I didn't change the name of the file. I call it now, uh, Pager Slim, I forgot to change the... So Pager Slim is like a pager, but instead of having all the page numbers rendered, it will just run, it will just show a previous or prev next uh, links, and you can change the... 
the UI for that. Uh, the idea is that with the pager slim, we don't have to compute the count of items that we need to render. Uh, it's very important for perf, uh, where where uh, counting elements is uh, is a perf issue when you have many uh, many items. So this way, it's a helper to make this kind of uh, pager easier. And the idea is that instead of having the page number as a parameter, it just gets a token of the last. Uh, item that was displayed in the page, or the or the first item that was displayed in the in the page, uh, so that you can say, give me the the element after this one, uh, using this such this this sort order. Uh, this way, you don't have to count every time um, the number of items to render the the pager only. Uh, so that's a um, perf aware pager, and I used it in. So we still have the old one, the pager, and there is pager slim based on what you want to do with with paging. Um, and they work exactly the same with shapes in the in the core shape, not the core shapes, but the navigation shapes or pager shapes. Okay, now it's just another pager shape. Um, and I will show you in the list. And I use it in the list bound driver to uh, render a pager with the list on the front end and on the back end, actually. Um, missing localizations on some screens. User logout in the admin, uh, so Antoine fixing some bugs here. Routes, <coughs> nicer routes. Again, routes, fix delete index, index, the route was wrong. I created uh, some fields, I created an HTML field and a markdown field. Um, I also created uh, some editors, I will show you, for the fields like we did for the parts, the editors for the parts, the flavors, they are also for the fields, uh, title metadata for SEO, so there is a custom contents metadata shape that uh, contains the title and can be overridden to define more things for each content item, for SEO for instance. Um, Content field documentation. So I did documentation. So documentation for the fields that have been created and how to use them. So listing the fields and the properties. Um, documentation for scripting, how to use scripting and extend scripting. Um, even code docs. Um, this is a big PR from uh, Nick and Jean Thierry, like 70 comments, 40 commits um, that will provide. Um, uh, support for um, theming ordering, like the base themes are ordered correctly, the views are taken correctly from the themes and overridden. Um, yeah, things like this. Uh, fixing resources, so Antoine added some more changes on the resources module, updating all the resources, jQuery bootstrap, font awesome. Um, we fixed some also issues with the resource tag helpers. Um, for instance, the support for versions, if there was a bug. It looks like there was a breaking change in the version class, but I could not find a breaking change, but I see the different behavior, which is weird. Uh, uh, so style and script tag helpers are different now, they're even better. Um, so the ID, let me show you. If you have never seen that, in the layout, for instance, not this layout this layout, yes. So when we say, this is a tag helper, so when we say style ASP.NET Bootstrap, it will inject the resource name Bootstrap, which is defined in the resource manifest. We can say here, use the CDN, and we say the version number. Here, by saying three, means any version which is three and above, but not four. We need the version three. If we need any version, the latest one, we will remove the version. Here we say we need a, th uh, a version between 3 and 4. If you need a version between 3.3 uh, .3 and 3.4, whatever the minor version is, you will say 3.3. .3. Okay, and it will, it will take the latest one. So right now, for Bootstrap 3 in the resource manifest, where is the resource manifest? Here, you can see that um, uh, Antoine did, so we have Bootstrap as a script 337, uh, as a style 337, and we also have it 
with 4.0 and 4.0, okay? So we have the two bootstrap versions in the, in the resource project. And then from the layout, you define which one you want. So this one says I need, well, the other one says I need uh, the third version. And the admin will say I need the fourth version because this is what it's using. Not sure that this is actually what is done in the layout for the admin, but uh, it should be done this way. Uh, oh no, actually the, the, this file is computed with the resource bootstrap. It's not loading it from uh, from the internet. It's not referencing it. It's embedding it in the in the admin min CS and the admin uh, JS. That's how it does that, a choice. So if, if one view requests version three and the other version four, uh, there will be an exception. You will get an exception saying conflicting versions. And how do you know that they're conflicting? Because you request two different, because the result of the two of them is different. They have the same name, but they return two different resources. After, or maybe right now they will take the latest in this case. But the, I think there's an open issue. We already talked about it. Um, so right now, I think it, because there will be two resources which will match the filters, it will take the latest because in the end they are ordered by uh, version. Uh, but we might want to get an exception saying there is a conflict because someone is requesting three. I, 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 think, I think that depends because some resources are uh, conflicting if you load multiple versions, but some might not be. Like, for example, if you load jQuery in no conflict mode, then you can load okay. multiple of them. But then why would you set I want version 3 if you don't care? Mm, because you may have code that, you may, you may have scripting code on your view that depends on, you, ha you haven't been tested on a, it might be a breaking change in jQuery that you haven't tested against it or. So either you might. want an exception because you want 3 or you don't care, let's get the latest. I don't care, I haven't tested. Or you might just want the views that request version 3 to get version 3 and the others to get the other one. To each 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 view oh, to, to get what yes. they request. In this case, it works. It's just I'm, I was thinking about during the same request, you have one resource asking for four and one resource asking for three in the same request. It, that's what I mean too. But there's so no reason say, for for some reason for some resources there, it might be completely valid valid to just include both of them in the request. That's weird. And I, and I, I think that depends on the resource in question. So for Bootstrap, for example, it would never make sense that to include both. But I think for some scripts, it might be so possible. What you can do then is instead of using the name, just use SRC and the file version and the file with the version. And the two of them will be injected. Yeah, but then you don't get all the advantages of. Well, you don't want them. Having. You don't Why want not? them to be, I mean, apparently you said you don't want them. You don't want to, for the resource manager to, to select one version, you say you want the two of them. Then don't try to match them. Just say no, they're two different no, things. No, but, I, no, but I, st I still want them to be uh, resource manifest defined so that, you know, the whole dependency chains and everything still works. I will wait there for an exception. Because now you're saying three and four should be rendered, but their dependencies might be also different. And what do we do with it? It's, it will be a mess. It will be an unexpected yeah. behavior. Yeah, it, sure. What I'm saying is that you may want to specify that when you define the resource, whether it can be loaded multiple versions or not. Because it kind of depends on the resource itself, don't you think? If it can be an option, sure. But Yes. So, 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 when, sorry, you so when you declare a resource for Bootstrap, you would declare it as only one version possible in the same request. And when you declare a resource for, I don't know, some other, some scripting library that is loaded in no conflict mode and you don't, you don't care if there's multiple, you declare it as multiple versions supported. And depending on how you yeah, declare it, you either throw an exception then, or don't. Well, I will just have a bootstrap dash three and a bootstrap dash four. So you still have the dependencies that de they depend on jQuery. So they will load the jQuery, but they are themselves two different scripts and you will get the two of them. That's true. But then, but and you, then can, you can't, but then yes. you can't as, as when you request them, then you can't be flexible and say, I want, I don't care. I want either version three or version four. 
if you then you use the bootstrap resource and not the bootstrap dash three and the bootstrap dash four. If you can customize it by having two two different two other, other names for the same script. I think it's a very special requirement here that you would mm -hmm. like the two version at the same time and you should specialize your special requirement. Yeah, I just hasn't this always been an issue with Orchard where you know people people make a site or they make a theme and they want to use a newer version of jQuery UI than what is in the box and then some built-in module uses the one that's in the box and you have to either go with that or you have to update Orchard or um, but yeah, of course, in that case, it wouldn't so, be possible to load with, both. And with this system, you can redef well, even before, you could have a redefinition of the manifest with your module to say jQuery is this version. Mm, yeah, that's true. And all the modules saying, I want jQuery, will use the version that you said. And you can, with this new thing, you can even say it in a view. From a view, you can get a, you can declare a definition, you can define a definition. If you add the SRC property, it will redefine or define the name that you use. Mm. And you can also add dependencies to other things. I documented that, I will show you later. So, so what did you say happens now? What, what's the current handling? If so I think that right now... Request different versions. I'd like you, to be able to say I want an exception as a parameter, but I think it will tell you latest because I worked in the code yesterday and if you look at um, the resource manager here, let me show you the full code, how it works. There is a first filter on the names to find them. Then from all the resources that have been filtered, it will look for the versions that match your parameter. Okay. And then if there are many that matches, then it will take the latest uh, here, first or default, descending from all the results from the previous filter. So I assume here it will just take the latest. I think it would make more sense to throw. I think it would be interesting to have a mode where you can throw to 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 show the discrepancies you have in your in your site. Mm, yeah. And and then if you don't want the mode to throw and take the latest, then okay, take the latest. Or maybe to be able to specify when you include it. Uh, sorry, when you <clears throat> when you require it, whether you accept to get a newer version than what you requested, or if you want it to throw. Sort of like you do with NuGet references, yeah. with uh, you know you specify at least to this version or exactly this version. Okay, so maybe we can pass it in the require settings then, then to say when yeah. you in the require setting, which is the object that you construct when you inject a tag or do include or require, mm -hmm. like you do at head, at foot or version. You could say when you say version, you could say no conflict or something like that. So you can say throw on throw on or accept upgrade or something like that. Yeah. Can you find an issue? Oh, that's the second one. Uh, <laughs> and you mentioned find resources. Find resources, require settings should have a parameter to define the behavior for version conflicts. Okay. Because the default is Right. And what was the other one that you wanted me to file an issue for we talked about before? Uh, p uh, base path, path base, oh, base path. virtual path. Exactly. And the default right now is use the highest version of all matches. So if you say you want Bootstrap and there is three and four, and you didn't specify a version or the version matches, then then it gets the latest, but. Yeah, we might want it to throw saying there are conflicts. Oh, in, in, in that case, I think it's fine to get the latest. But if you specify a version, you sh probably shouldn't get something much newer. Okay, fine issue. We expose all the scenarios and comment on them because there are many scenarios in this case. Mm. What you write and what you intend when you write something. Like if I write three, what do I mean? I want three and not four. Or do I want three or four? You definitely want three because four is just 
Good. Two that's different. Right. I agree. That's what is implemented. Um, yeah, that's why it's semantic versioning. Okay. Should we support integrated attribute? Uh, it's already supported. If you look at the resource manifest, if I can find it, you will see here, for instance, set CDN, set CDN integrity. Um, okay, uh, documentation for fields extensibility this morning. Now I so I had few a little documentation about the fields available. Now it's also explaining how to extend them, either making new fields or creating new field editors. Um, uh, specifying language in documentation code blocks. Yeah, let begin. Nice, nicer comments. Uh, demos, demo, 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 demo. Nemo, it's already playing. I did a change, but we don't care. I'm going to the admin of my web, main website, and I must have like 50 tenants already. I will create a new one. You see, I have many because I worked on the recipe, so I had to create to create that so many times. Oh my God. So I have block 45. I will create a new tenant called block 46. URL prefix block 46. I don't define the other things. They will be done during setup. Create. Now, if I click on block 46, I go to the setup. And you see how often it is. 46. And the recipe now, there are. Oh my god. What has been broken? Bootstrap, we touch my bootstrap. No way. Requires jQuery. jQuery is not loaded. Well, I will add it. Setup.admin.js. Let me see. Or setup assets.json. Daniel knows this file. It says, I want jQuery. I want bootstrap there, I want bootstrap and all these things and put it in setup.js. So, content, script, setup.js, it should have bootstrap, it has it, it should have jQuery, it doesn't. The views layout needs bootstrap for in setup views layout. Setup views layout. Look, setup.js. It okay. has Bootstrap 4. Look at what I'm doing. Setup.js is built from. Okay. What it's missing is this file has changed. Okay, that's the issue. Let me show you. So it will be easy to fix. Okay. My bad. Um, it's 3.1.1. Uh, let's be sure. 3.1.1 here. My bad. So let's. Everywhere also. Okay. 0. Okay, this is just documentation, so that's good. Now I just need to rebuild the asset. We, to, to prevent this, you could specify a wildcard for the minor version, maybe? In the... Oh, we can do that? Yeah, why not? Or we could use a resource manager and say, I just need Bootstrap. <laughs> But that's two different ways, and I think the two ways are, are good. Uh, 
Yeah, why not? Three dot star. Can, does it work? Yeah, that should work, right? Yeah. No, I think I think so. Yeah. Because we can have stars here. Let's do that. Let's fix it better, like this. Uh, okay, and I will do a gulp build. And now we just need to F5 it. <laughs> just make sure you don't have more than one version then in the source folder. No, we don't. get all yeah. of them. But we don't. You see, 3, 2, 1. Yes, I yeah. removed the 3.1.0. That's why. Yeah. Uh, so now this is better. I can say the blog recipe and the blog 46 name. Uh, table prefix blog 46, connection string this one. This a password, a password, and I will hit enter, and I will say when I hit enter, okay? Because it's also a bit too few how fast it is compared to Ultraman. one. Three, two, one, hitting enter. Two seconds. In two seconds, I build this website, which may, is made of a custom theme, the blog theme, which contains uh, three types: blog, blog post, and article on the recipe. It also created the blog itself, a blog post an about page, a menu with the home page and a, the about page. So I will click on the about page. You see blog 46 slash about. Uh, the about page contains some text. Uh, the home page is defined as the blog itself. So the blog is the home page. Um, the blog, the blog post, and the about page have uh, a subtitle field and an image, it, not the blog, but the about page and um, um, the article type, we use article type, and the blog post type have um, a subtitle and a header image because when you click on a blog or an article, you can customize the image which is in the background. Uh, this is a subtitle, this is a title, the title part. Um, this is the body. The body of the blog post is a markdown body, and the body of an about page is a HTML body. Um, this is a title pointing to the home page, so nothing special. I can click blog, blog post one. Um, there is a pager when you have more than 10 elements, and this is configurable. So I will configure it to two elements just to show you the pager, the, the new pager with the next prev. So if I go to the admin, admin, um, content types. So it created all these types. Impose a well, at least blog post and article. So if I go to the blog and I click on the list uh, part, I can configure the page size. It's ugly, but it works. So I will say two, and I can just contain blog post, but it could contain something else. We already saw that. And now if I go to my content items and I click on the blog. So the blog posts are not listable, but they could be. Right now you click on the blog and you see the blog post. So I can create a new blog post. No, I can't, okay, because why could it work? Uh, so this also has been broken. I have to check when, why. Can I at least edit a blog post? Oh my God, I can't even edit a blog post. Okay. Maybe me. Let me see. I will just. This should not be. To find why. Processing async is null here. Shape description. Which one is null? Shape binding is null. Markdown editor. Okay. I must have broken the. Editor, Markdown Editor. It can't find Markdown Editor. Markdown Editor. It can't find Markdown Editor. Oh, maybe a settings issue. Oh, no. Okay, settings issue. Let me see. Markdown Editor. It should be, yeah, it should be Markdown Editor. So, Markdown Editor, Markdown Editor, Markdown Editor. Markdown views markdown there is no such thing as markdown editor there is a default editor that's the issue i think i changed it 
yes if i go to the markdown part edit it will look for markdown editor and if there is a custom editor it will look for this custom editor so this file should be called markdown editor i broke it um and 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 maybe other things f5 because i want to show you this it's beautiful best demo effect ever so slash blog 46 admin content items blog this one and now this works um, so this is the markdown editor and what is interesting is that it's wizzy no this is a yeah it's wizzy that's weird why didn't oh okay it still needed the, to find the tools of view um, so this is markdown with the markdown editor and what is nice so you see the image url so what i need to do for the demo effect is to enable the content preview view enable content items blog edit this blog post and if i enable the preview now this is a nice preview okay because it's a nice theme you can resize it and see how it behaves with the breakpoints okay and um, title subtitle and as i type the subtitle it reflects on the UI. And that's beautiful when you have a nice team that users can see what they are typing. And even with this is very nice. Let's go You see it's live on the right. I love it. It's beautiful when you have a, something like this. Um, and that works also for images. So if you type the image here from the about page, this is about, as you type, it reacts on the right. It's wrong here, there, there, there are four fours when I type that, but blog, um, I don't remember what it was. About, post. Yeah, so that's good. Um, close preview. So that's it for the editor. So yeah, the recipe defines the markdown editor in WYSIWYG. It, creates the fields, it creates the content, what else? Uh, the menu is taken into account, you see it on the, on the home page, so the main menu defining the home and about. Um, the recipe, let me show you the recipe. Uh, oh, I wanted to create a pager, who cares, it's a pager. Let me show you the, the recipe. The recipe, because it's using the scripts, uh, the recipe here the blog recipe metadata this is new so now the recipes can support variables i open an issue i let everyone comment nobody uh, and the variables is a set of variables that are defined for the world recipe in this case i define a variable named blog content item id and i use this specific function that i explained last week which is generating a, a unique identifier for content item ids and because it's beginning by uh, square bracket and ends by square bracket, it will be interpreted as script. And this is the prefix of the script that will uh, decide which language this thing is written in. So this will ask for the script manager to give it a script engine which supports the JS prefix. And it returns one engine. It's the default implementation for now is the JavaScript engine, which is done this way you see prefix js so if you create another engine that supports the js prefix it will be used if you create another engine that supports another prefix then you can use another prefix to do that um, uh, so that's it um, and what is important it, it was uh, kind of how to, to make it work the issue is that variables is using a js script engine but how do we know from the setup that we need to enable 
the scripting module, because it's a module scripting, that itself will uh, register the scripting engine and the JavaScript scripting engine. The idea is that these variables are evaluated lazily only when they are requested. And this thing is requested in a step that is creating the content items, which is after the step that enables the modules. So the first step is to enable all the modules necessary for this recipe. Okay, so in this case, it will enable the scripting module somewhere. It's not. It should. Interesting. Or maybe it's part of the setup. Setup. Oh no no no. Yeah. So the scripting is part of the setup. But you know the issue was the UID. The UID is part of the contents. That's it. The UID is part of the so the recipe. Rec the recipe engine. The recipe module requires the scripting engine because it's part of it. What is not part is this global methods here, extending the scripts with custom um, methods. And this one is from the contents module, so it's evaluated lazy. That's what is evaluated lazy. Sorry. Um, so, uh, block content item ID, why do we have this? It's because, it's because two things. First, uh, when we define the home page, we want this content item to be the home page. So we will define the, um, the route to uh, define this home page by using this block content item ID. Okay, so you can say the content item ID value of the home page will be evaluate the script which is variables variables is another global method added to the to the engine so whatever the engine you want this is independent from the engine you are using the variable rule or method uh, will evaluate the current variable from the recipe so this variable is provided in the recipes module um, or at least I think so It's not in the recipes module. Where is it? Variables, method provider. Yes, in, in not the module itself, but the library that uh, is back past the uh, that back backs the the module. So there is a variables method provider. It's a global method provider. You define which method and you provide a delegate to it. And uh, this delegate accepts a string as a parameter and returns an object. Okay. And this is the code that is executed, whatever the language you are using. Here in this case, JavaScript, but it could be anything. And this one, this variable, itself evaluates um, the result of the variable call. So if the variable returns itself a script, it will be evaluated. Okay. And in this case, it's a case block content item ID is a script, so it will also evaluate that recursively. Um, so we use it for the route, and we also use it for defining the content item itself. So when we say we create a blog, this is the content item ID we provide, okay? Um, and also when we create a blog post, we say it's contained by this content item, okay? This same blog content item ID. We could have used, instead of UID, we could have used a static string. We could say just a blog and whatever number you want or anything. I am the blog. Okay, this is also a valid uh, identifier. Um, in this case, I'm using a UID. So now we have variables, and you can do anything you want. It's just if you want to reuse the same value for all the modified, for instance, uh, if we have no, we don't have or created date. If you have dates you want to set as the same value, you will create. A Okay, um, and you can also just use scripts inside any property of these things, variable or not variable. Okay. Question. Um, yes. Can, can, Please file an issue. Do, <laughs> I think this will be quicker. Okay. Do, do you have access to these variables from a recipe step? In, yes. Like. Oh, you do. Okay. Well, and so the, it's, the so it's not just good. in the file, but also like yeah, at runtime in the code for a recipe. Oh, step. Can I you see define... what you mean. 
Uh, yes, because you can resolve. Uh, let me see. Mm, good question. I will say so because let's look at the, impl the implementation. We just create uh, a scope per step, and the scope. It's a scripting scope, and the scope will have. And when you resolve, let me see. Let me see. So the, each each step gets a service provider, so you can resolve stuff. And when, yeah, yeah, it's there. Um, let me show you. The, the reason I ask, actually, is because it would be great if steps could also add to these variables so that you know you run a step, and mm -hmm. then that step could add a variable that you could use in another step. Uh, interesting. Yes, yeah, so, so we need another function. We need a function called set variable, and then you can do whatever you want. Yeah. So the variable method provider should also have a set variable. Or with another parameter that, like jQuery, you know, when you just pass one parameter, it gets you the value, and when you pass two parameters, it sets the value. And um, and then and then it will set the variables. Yeah, you you can. I, I, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. That would be useful. The, the variables are global, though, for the right. recipe. And each step uses a new what I call a scripting scope, which. Uh, uh, which will let you, I don't know why I created scopes, but it was necessary. I can't remember. Yeah, a scope is a, a new instance of the engine. So there is no config. With, so when you're on a step, you don't overwrite variables from another step. If you want to exchange values, then yes, you will use variables. Correct. So yes, you can do that in recipe. Um, yeah. And the next step is for recipes, and as I created the issue for that, is in on top of variables, have parameters, which are kind of variables, but that come from the outside of the recipe. So when you run the recipe, you can set a set of values. And parameters are better than just variables because they will describe the parameter itself that is required, like the type that is required, the validation, maybe some UI hint, so that you can build a UI from the parameters. Um, that will be the next step. But I don't need it for now, so it will be later. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, we could have also a recipe step that contains other recipe step that, but that will filter based on the script. Why not? Like if you want to parameterize the the, the execution of the recipe, uh, we could have a recipe step that does a loop for on or another recipe step. Like you want to create the same content item but with different values, like for testing data, you could say repeat this content item and vary this value by the the counter, like uh, one, but maybe the subtitle. Okay, you could do that. You could do uh, something like yes, uh, this plus variable counter, or just Foo, if you can assign foo in your script, so we can we can have many things with that. It would be great. Um, I think that's it for the demos. Um, resources, we saw that. Um, yeah, that's good. And the blog is still very fast. It's like any other website in Ultra Two now. It's fast. Questions? Did I miss many things in the chat? Ah, oh, George. Ah, oh, yes, I had questions. Theming. I watched your video about um, Avalon and and the other one. I can't remember the name of the other one. And Camry and okay, and GDP uh, and PLP and whatever. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> we actually have a, another version of that that we're going to probably okay. present next year. Um, yeah, I have questions about what, what, how can we make theme interesting? And I have some issues with fields. I created the, I created an issue on our repository. Yeah, just the, what, what should we do with theming? What should we change to make it better? That's, okay. If uh, take it in the back of your mind and just, if if you can, if you can. Think yeah, about you know, what, actually, let me get some feedback from the guys and. Uh, okay. If they, are, if they have also some other systems they like, like other CMSs or other things they've seen, 
and they liked it and they don't find it in Ultra and just giving IDs and everything. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think I have some a couple of things that we've talked about, but uh, let me get a complete list for you guys. Okay, thank you. So if you have to go. Uh, Carlos, when will Orchard 2 be out? Uh, never. Um, when it's ready, if you want to help us, it will be faster, I'm telling you. Um, that is going fast, right? Every week we show, I think, some great progress. Um, we already, as you can see, can host a very nice blog. Okay, it works. It's a blog. What it's missing? So, blog. This is my first... Uh, uh, how do you say that, Bertrand, your PM? Click, click. What's the word with click? Click step or click? Don't remember the word. Milestone. They, they, they use it, the PMC, they use another term. Another term. Um, and you will write it, and no. Um, click stop, click stop, yeah. So blog post is a, is, is hosting a blog, I think, is a, is a good milestone. What's missing to host a blog? Uh, so right now we have a theme. It's a theme. It's not the, maybe the theme you want, but it's a theme. It validates that everything is working and themable to theme a blog. Okay, um, but you could create your own or port some theme that you find interesting. Um, so we have a theme. Uh, we have a recipe that creates the full block with content items, content types, editors. We have the content preview. Um, what's missing is um, RSS API, and we'll port the one from Orchard One because nobody complained about it. Um, we need um, the live writer. Um, yes, oh yes, uh, Antoine is looking to the, create, we created a project in GitHub to track what's needed to to have a, to support blogs. Um, we need Lab Writer, um, there are some bugs that are necessary. We need, so I, I've, I linked this item but it's not related, we need, we need um, media management. I don't think you can create a blog if you don't have media management. So, well, we can as a first step, but so if I if I go in the with the goal of being able to support the weblogs ASP.NET on the new architecture, uh, which will, will be very nice, we will need media management. But we could have our own blogs in alpha without media management. That would be fine. But RSS feeds a meta web blog API to be able to blog uh, from the live writer, the open live writer. Um, but same thing, it's based on HTML, so maybe the RSS, the, the, the markdown editor will be sufficient. RSS is, is necessary. Um, some little glitches in the UI, like being able yeah, to display the item meta data in the content items. But Overall, everything should be available to host the blog post. Uh, something that might be necessary, though, for the for being able to iterate on features is the um, a working export. So right now the infrastructure is there, but we don't we have also import steps, or recipe steps, but we don't have that many export steps to be able to export metadata, export the content. Okay, we have the infrastructure, but we don't have the steps to actually export the data. Uh, and if we want to host something live, and we do breaking changes on the data, we need to be able to export them and re-import that. Okay, otherwise we won't be able to to will be blocked on upgrades. Um, no updates on the new admin theme, no one has been working on that, so no updates, you see the status. Um, and yeah, we need also to apply the same admin theme as the, the same menu as the new admin theme into uh, Orchard 2 also. That's also a task I want to do. Um, but I think we are pretty close to being able to host blogs on Orchard 2. And, and uh, if I can, I will I would add um, a website on Azure and and open people to, to host their blog post on that. Um, we'll see how it goes. Questions? Okay. Those are questions. Good. Who wants their blog on Orchard 2? with a nice new theme. I'm not doing that. I do. I am currently migrating my, my own blog. Good. Yes. Good. And I so made you... a, my own theme also. Oh. Yes. Based on the thing that we did in uh, 
O2 or a new one, completely different? Mm, a new one. Oh, you see, for yeah, the, the new theme, for instance, requires two fields. It requires the header image and the subtitle. So the recipe creates them, but the theme will not work without that. So the features and the theme are very linked together. So I don't think we could switch from one theme to the other. So that's also part of the my yes. questions. So I, don't think, I don't think you would be able to publish on Live Writer if the blog is in Markdown. Yes, for instance, yes, we agree. Why it will work because Markdown is also compatible with HTML, but it would only publish on certain fields on certain parts. Uh, the Meta Web Blog uh, API. Yeah, it will just work as a body, right? Yeah. Yes. No, I mean uh, URL, title, body, mm. uh, the uh, date created. Okay. So that's all. Um, Thanks for joining. See you on Thursday. If you have comments, please use GitHub, Gitter, and Skype. Uh, I'm always available. And other